The Clover House stock is literally on life support. Check this out. In the last year, the stock has lost nearly 80% of its value. And in the last six months, the stock is down 74%. And the news doesn't get much better over the last month. The stock is down nearly 20%. Now the question is, with an earnings call out due later today, has the stock neared the bottom and should you be looking to invest? Well, to answer that question, I'm gonna take you through my personal stock screening process and talk to you about some of the key metrics that you need to know. So straight off the bat, there is a big red sign for me on the market cap versus the enterprise value. So the enterprise value is sitting at 546 million, the market cap sitting at 960 million. And what this tells me is that there is still a fair amount of sentiment priced into the stock price. Obviously, we would typically like to see the enterprise value being higher than the current market cap. What is good on the stock is that there's strong insider holding, 10.83%, and institutional holding is sitting at 39.64%. In terms of the short interest, this has been a growing number and it is an area of concern for investors. Of all the outstanding shares at the moment, 5.94% of those shares are sold short. And of course, the company is not currently making money. It is sitting on negative free cash flow of 145.6 million. So that, of course, is a big concern for investors. Now, moving into our first screener, and that is looking at the fundamentals. We're looking for a P ratio between 1 and 25, and we're looking for net margin of greater than 10%. Now, unfortunately, there is no P ratio, and that is because they are sitting on negative net margin, negative 45.49% to be precise. So they are falling short on both of our first two screeners. Then looking at the net equity, we obviously want positive equity and they have 793.5 million in positive equity. And in terms of the dividend cost, if they were paying a dividend, we'd want this to be less than free cash flow to make sure that they're not funding a dividend out of debt. And uh, obviously because there is no dividend, they get the check mark by default. Also, the other thing we're looking at is shareholder dilution. We wanna make sure that shareholders have not been diluted in the last three years. Unfortunately, there has been a lot of shareholder dilution going on. In fact, 372.6 million additional shares have been issued. And now this takes us down to our debt screener. Now here, we are specifically looking to see how well the company's managed their debt position and more specifically is there any red flags going into what could be a changing macroeconomic picture with rising interest rates so the first thing is on debt to equity they are doing extremely well our benchmark is basically anything below 40 and they're sitting on 0.07 percent the current ratio should also be greater than one and they are sitting at 2.43 so that's another check mark we would also like to see free cash flow paying down at least 10 percent of the debt unfortunately negative free cash flow so it means they're going to fail on this check over here and this of course now brings us down to our momentum screener now specifically we're looking for the top line and bottom line revenues to be increasing year on year for the last three years now looking at the total revenue Revenue, this has indeed been increasing year on year and this is something you're going to hear the company talk about a lot this is what they're going to focus on they're going to talk about revenue but unfortunately this is not translating into the absolute bottom line in fact the free cash flows operating cash flow net income are all negative as well as operating income and gross profit so this is a big area of concern now moving down to our final screener and here we are looking at historical growth has the return on equity been greater than 10 return on asset greater than 10 and return investor capital greater than 10 you can see they are performing absolutely dismally negative 306 negative 63 and negative 129 percent in addition to that we are always looking for earnings per share not only to be positive but producing a compounded annual return of 10 percent and of course there is negative EPS so they are failing on that so now looking at our summary and to make sense of our four key screening processes the fundamentals are weak debt management is above average momentum is yet to be proven and growth growth is completely non-existent now in order for them to start hitting growth they're going to have to start hitting the numbers on the bottom line revenue whether that's going to start happening in this set of reports that comes out highly unlikely but even if they do one quarter does not make a business, they're going to have to do this consistently for the next couple of years to really make a change in the company structure. Now moving down to our valuations, just very quickly, this is where we get into how we price out on the stock and where we believe the stock is gonna go in terms of value. Now we would typically price this business out at 10 to 15 on the free cash flow as a multiple they are obviously sitting on a negative multiple and that is because of negative free cash flow the second thing we'd look at is the earnings per share specifically on a discounted cash flow valuation now we would discount in at a rate of 10 
we would give them uh, growth rates from 5 to 15 and we would be prepared to pay a fair target P of 5% based on the industry. Now in terms of the price models, this is how we're coming out and I'm going to walk you through this because you really do need to understand this if you are invested in the stock or looking to invest. The market is currently pricing the stock at $2.04 so this is what investors are prepared to pay for the stock. The valuation price on free cash flow is negative as is on the earnings per share. However, there is a ray of hope because on the enterprise value, it is a positive number. In fact, on enterprise value, we're coming out at $1.32. So obviously this is considerably lower than the current uh, price in the market. Having said that, the analysts are very bullish on the stock. They believe the stock is going to $3.80. Now, I'm gonna give you my personal verdict in just a second, but I wanna let you know there is a second part to this video, which is gonna come up in your end screen at the end of my verdict and I'm going to talk you through the detailed business breakdown. I'm going to be talking about some of the risk factors, I'm going to be talking about some of the catalysts for growth, I'm also going to be talking about some of the key revenue breakdowns that you need to understand if you're looking to invest into the stock or if this is a stock that is on your radar. So with that being said, let's move directly into my verdict and let's talk about my personal projection. So I'm project projecting out at $2.65 over the next uh, 12 months. This is a potential margin of 30% and uh, if I were looking to buy in, my ceiling price would be $2.25 and anything below that I would start looking at this as a serious investment. That being said, it is a speculative play and the reason why I say this is because they have unproven fundamentals. Now if you do want to understand the business, if you want to understand some of the key breakdowns, risks and catalysts for growth, check out the video on your screen and I'll see you over there shortly.